Hey everybody, it's Leroy from Leroy Gaming. Today is Wednesday, September 28th, 2022. And today we are the first major content update for Diablo Immortal. I'm really excited for this update because not only are we getting a brand new dungeon, a brand new season, new legendaries, new legendary gems, a brand new set of gear for players to collect, but we also have an overhaul of features of how warbands can interact in the game. So make sure to stick around as we look at all the details that are live right now in game so that you can check it out. Of course, if you find this information helpful and easy to digest, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. And now let's go and take a look at everything that is coming to Diablo Immortal right now. So the first feature of this update called the Forgotten Nightmares is the new dungeon called Silent Monastery. Now this is a dungeon that like all other dungeons is going to scale. It is meant for two to four players that are level 60 and above. And as this description says, the inside the Silent Monastery is home to Eternal Night, making it nearly impossible to navigate. Fortunately, some of the temple statues can be illuminated. Now as you progress and flood the Temple of Light, there's but one direction to head into the obsidian heart of the Silent Monastery. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ancient Nightmare in its lair will be no easy task. So this was explained by the lead content developer as a kind of multi-phase encounter that should be a nice change and advancement for the dungeons. And I am assuming it's going to be one of the places that will drop the new set pieces that we will talk about in just a moment. The second feature is called Castle Sirengar, and I may be mispronouncing that, but this is a basic new feature that's going to change how warbands function. And warbands are kind of like mini groups of up to eight players they can form, kind of like mini guilds that function outside of the clan system. And it's a new place for your warband to call home. And what the update says is that the warband exploration experience will replace Warband camps and introduce two replayable game modes along with passive bonuses that can be upgraded as you secure and defend your castle. Now here are the main things to note. This is a the first part of a major large scale improvement to how warbands function. So the requirements to slay monsters with your warband to establish camp has been removed, which is great because that was a huge pain in the butt for new players. They have lowered the threshold for Warband Heliquary raids from 8 to 4 people. This is a big deal because people would have to rotate people in and out constantly just because maybe one person was missing or two people couldn't be online. So they have to kick people out and bring in new people for the raids. That never felt good. So now as long as half the people are there, you can bring four other guests and kind of rotate around, which is great. So as long as four members of the raid from the same warband participate, the raid can be filled with anybody else to get the full Bennett and yield the extra rewards for warband members. Now, successfully completing a warband Heliquary raid for the first time will now grant warband members an additional 400% drop rate increase for sealed warband chests. And this resets every Monday and Thursday because as you may or may not know, you can do these warband raids twice a week. So you can get a multi-day buff and get the benefits multiple times a week. Now it is important to note that you must be at least level 20 and part of a warband and then speak to Valstus in Westmarch Rakis Plaza to begin the quest for dealing with Castle Sirangar. And there are three features to this new system. We got Purging the Depths, Warband Rooms, and the events of Syringar. And in the Purge the Depths of the Castle Syringar feature, you can either solo or with up to seven other Warband members go in and basically cleanse these enemies that basically are within the depths of the castle. Once you cleanse the castle of these, as they call, unwanted guests, Additional rooms will become available for you and your warband members to occupy. 
And you can see uh, in this picture, you got like the infirmary, uh, the arsenal. Uh, we got training room. And these different elements, you know, there's, there's eight roles. This is similar to how the warbands had eight different roles. And you can assign these rooms to different members. And it's going to increase different effects. Everything from the block chance, uh, a support role resurrecting fallen allies 15% faster, the attacker damage done is increased by 3.5%, and so forth. And very important is these actual numbers will be upgraded. So unlike the original warbands that were static, you can now upgrade warband rooms by placing remnants received from purging the depths of Castle Sirangar. So this is something where you're going to have additional bonuses as you continue working on your castle. Now the next feature is the defense of Sirangar. And this has two different defense modes that you can partake in. The standard mode you can do once a week, and you basically have to withstand eight waves of bloodthirsty demons. And as you do this, you're going to gain experience and rewards for holding and defending. And then after the first time, you can technically do this endless amount of times afterwards. You're scored, and so the higher the up the leaderboards you go, you're going to be able to get additional rewards and unlock things like the Syringar Defense Portrait Frame for your hard work. So something optional that you can kind of work on if you really want to kind of push the limits and the rankings. Obviously, this is going to be, for those that have really high power characters, they're going to do much better on this. So this is a feature much more for the pay-to-win crowd. And the final feature related to this new area for Warbands is the Ancestral Weapon feature. As you defend the castle and purge the castle of enemies, you will have a chance to find ancestral weapons. You're going to be able to place them in what they call your ancestor, ancestral tableau. That's looking at the heart of the castle. And once it's placed, you're gonna those weapons will confer a portion of their attributes, such as you know strength stats, intelligence stats, and so forth, onto all members of the warband. Each warband member can only place one ancestral weapon the tableau so if you think about it if you have all eight party members you can have eight different ancestral weapons in the tableau now in addition to having these stats it also mentions that they may have special powers that can proc based on the invocation gear you may wear that will drop in this experience so participating in castle syringar activities Gear that drops here has a chance to possess additional invocation properties. Invocation gear can be equipped to your character in its respective item slot to receive the benefit and triggered ability of your ancestral weapon. And you can mix and match invocation gear of the ancestral weapon of your choice to further customize your build. So here's an example. Uh, your ancestral weapon might provide the property of deal lightning damage to surrounding enemies. When combined with invocation such as chance to trigger your ancestral property when you deal damage. So the combination would be chance to deal lightning damage to surrounding enemies when you deal damage. So there's going to be lots of different variety of ways and combinations that you can bring these together. It's another fun way to unlock some new content, gain some extra player power, and partake with these activities with your warband. Now, as always, we also have a new season of the Battle Pass, both free and paid. So we're now on to Season 5 of the Battle Pass. We're going to have... Uh, Lots of uh, very cost-effective items that you can gather up for this. And as always, we're also going to have a new cosmetic set. But that's not all. We also have a new Heraquary raid boss. Is a lich the mishap and shape misshapen. So you can basically be prepared for another tier of difficulty. That again will scale. Now do note that you need a combat rating of at least 6175 for this. You know, uh, I'm nowhere near there right now. So this is definitely getting to a point where uh, for the extremely hardcore that have been playing non, uh, non-stop so far or the mega, mega pay to win. Now, that's okay because even the casuals eventually will get this. It'll give them something new to uh, catch up to or get carried potentially by their guildies. But this is uh, obviously a very, very high difficult rating. Now, real quick, the Scourging the Dark limited time event is back. So this is as before, and just another way to do daily activities that you're probably already doing and get some additional rewards. Also, the Hungering Moon is back again. 
So this is going to be from October 6th to October 10th. They have a new kind of image for it, but it's the same event as always. And again, it's something that you don't really have to think about too much. And if you don't want to, and you're just going to end up unlocking extra loots just for the things that you do daily anyway. Now, I do like the image for the new cosmetic set, the crowned ones cosmetic set that has been added. And this is one that you can just buy with eternal orbs. You can, of course, check it out in game. But I really, really like the image here. This is very, very, very cool. Now, that's not all. They've also added new legendary gems. So there's a brand new one star gem, two star gem, and five star gem. Now, also, it's very important to note they've added a new kind of, it seems like a, a three week buff. Anytime a five star gem drops, it has a 50% chance to drop the new Frozen Heart five star gem. So this is great if you want to find this, but not have the super low chances of it dropping based on uh, the amounts that are out there. Now let's take a look at these gems. The first one's the Blessed Pebble. One star gem increases the duration of beneficial effects on you by 12% increases your movement speed by 8% for three seconds after gaining a beneficial effect. The two star gem is called the Abiding Curse. Your attacks have a 15% chance. To curse enemies, reducing their attack and movement speed by 35% for 8 seconds. Cursed enemies also take 10% increased damage from your attacks. Cannot curse the same target more than once every 20 seconds. And then finally we have the Frozen Heart, 5 star gem. When you take damage, activate a Frigid Shield for 6 seconds that chills the enemy attacker and absorbs damage equal to 360% of your base damage plus 1458. Frigid Shield also grants your attack a 60% chance to chill enemies. Cannot Gain Frigid Shield more than once every 20 seconds. Now don't forget, as you level these up and tear them up, there's going to be additional benefits that you'll get from them. This is the second kind of reactive 5-star gem we have now. So it's interesting if it's going to be part of any of the metas. But, you know, it's, it's a variety, which is nice. Now, uh, we will look at the new set, but I did want to point out this update to Legendary and Rare Crest improvements. Players can now trade 1600 Platinum for one Legendary Crest. Can be now once a week. 1600 platinum is not a lot. This is pretty nice considering you can, you know, sell a tier three gem for about 3600 platinum uh, on the auction house. And even after the tax, it's over 3000. So that's not too bad. And then you can trade 200 platinum for a rare crest, which you can do up to three times a week. And I would never ever recommend these because they're just kind of shitty. Uh, and you can, uh, to do this, you meet John Doe Morin, the crest merchant. Located in West March Palace Courtyard. Now, let's take a look at the new Gloom Guide Prize set. And this set is centered all around using the dash skill to amplify your damage. So, that's interesting. Now, do note here, between the addition of the new dungeon and this new set, they have shuffled up where all of these drop. So, make sure to check your inventory and check your actual set pieces. If you haven't seen my guide on gearing, you can check it out. It teaches you how to check all the locations of all the gems in game. But this will be important if you're looking up the new drop locations for this and all your previous sets. If you don't look this up, you may be surprised that your previous farm spots aren't what you thought anymore. So there may be some changes and surprises for everybody. Now with this new set, the two piece bonus increases your damage done by 15% for three seconds after using a dash skill. So, lots of dashing. Uh, the four piece bonus increases your critical hit chance by 22.5% for three seconds after you use a dash skill. This is big because you may not notice, but the only other set that had a high crit chance increase was the pet set. And so if you weren't using pets, that wasn't so great. So here's a way where you can increase your crit chance dramatically, even if you're not a pet build. And then your six set bonus unleashes a wave of terror while your dash skill ends, dealing X damage and causing nearby enemies to flee in fear for three seconds. The wave of terror will only trigger when enemies are nearby, but cannot occur more than uh, once every 40 seconds. I don't think that's great. I don't know how good the damage is going to be, but fear, I guess if you're doing high difficulty content and you're hoping it doesn't hit you, it's okay. More often than not, people try and burst DPS and AOE enemies, so... We'll see. Uh, for certain builds, it's going to be great. For others, this won't be so great. I can see a lot of people getting a four-piece bonus here and getting a different two-piece bonus from a different set. But we will have to see. 
And so those are the main elements. There are also some minor changes and updates to Warband Chest Legendary items, uh, Immortal Rain Defend the Vault Improvements, uh, Corvus Expedition Variants. So I, I'll pause it here for a second in case you guys want to read about this. Also, new base tier entries. There are 20 new entries. That's nice. Uh, and that helps out. The grand market adjustments are kind of nice too. So the time frame in which players can buy items you have up for sale has been reduced from 12 hours to 3 hours. So this is kind of interesting. It just allows you to cycle through items. If other people undercut you, you can now you know repost your items more quickly. So that's really good. They've also adjusted the Eternal Orb Bundle pricing slightly, as you see here, to make it a little bit more fair as far as how many uh, Eternal Herbs it takes to buy Legendary Gems. So really, it's to avoid those situations where you have just not enough to buy a new Legendary Gem, which felt really, really bad. So they made these tiny adjustments to make it so that you can get kind of even purchases or more even purchases. So that's everything that hits today. What are your thoughts on this? Have you jumped in the game? Have you tried this out? What are your thoughts on the new dungeons and the new features? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, guys, thank you for all the support. Thank you for liking and subscribing. And we'll see you in the next update.